Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If you're a first time viewer, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon so that you can see all the tips, tricks, and configuration tutorials that I provide here on the channel. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate each and every one of you and this would not be possible without you. So I know in the last video we said we were going to do a super secret Synology video tonight, but here's the deal. So my production assistant, she got braces today. So my production assistant's not feeling really up to par. So I don't want to drag her through a long video today. We're going to work on that Saturday, publish it on World Backup Day, which is Sunday. Um, and so tonight we're going to do a little bit of a shorter video. And tonight we're going to do an unboxing of... Thank you, production assistant. That is her conclusion of her role in this video because she is not feeling well. If you've ever had braces, you can understand how that goes. And tomorrow she's probably going to really be sore. So we'll see how it goes. But excited about the braces and things coming in the future. So what she handed me tonight is the Axis C8033 Network Audio Bridge. And underneath here you can see it says it's a versatile audio link so you're probably asking what the heck does this little unit do well we're going to be doing a lot of videos on the axis uh, speaker system the ip speaker system now axis did not send this to me i bought this myself i'll leave a link to it down in the description uh retails for about 199 bucks um, you can pick this up. You might be able to find it a little cheaper floating around, but then you may have to pay taxes, uh, depending on the state you're in, you may have to do whatever. So with tax to me, I paid $199. So it was a little cheaper, free shipping, but Illinois has sales tax and that's how it is. You just pay the tax. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what this does. So this integrates with, um, the access IP audio environment and allows you to bridge not only, and you'll see on here, um, not only in the older style, so your RCA outs, that kind of audio, but you can take any headphone jack, uh, any uh, headphone jack compatible cable, plug it in here, plug it to any device that can take that, and um, that's the 3.5 millimeter jack. I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to show it to you. And you can pump that sound through all of your access speakers. We can do zoning. We can do all that stuff. We can put this on a SIP server. And we're going to get into some really cool uh, configuration videos when it comes to the access speaker. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is how it comes. It came in a package just a little bit bigger than this. We'll go ahead and open it up. And you can see... There's uh, some access uh, propaganda here in the back, and then here is the unit itself. It is a really little unit, a really s a small little unit. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to take this out. So here's the unit itself. We'll come back to that in a second. The other things that are in the box, we have two things of Velcro. We have some FCC product uh, stickers there that tell us. Um, the looks like it's got our serial number, which is probably the MAC address. It also has our part number. And then there's a couple of uh, relay outs. This has uh, some relay out spots on it that we'll look at, and they give you the hardware to go with that. And then you get an installation guide to go with it. So it's, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, like, <sighs> Axis is. Uh, you know, don't need CobraNet anymore, any of these uh, proprietary things. Um, Access is doing this through SIP. So, um, so they're going to use SIP to connect all kinds of different devices. So here is the unit itself. You can see over here it's got the Access Communications logo. See that there? And then here are your RCA outs. So these go out to RCA. And then over here... You have the, there you go, over here you have the 3.5 millimeter jack, and over here there's a reset button. On this side we have the I.O. here. On this side we have the Ethernet, and that, oh yeah, so that's DC power. So one of those plastic things is, is for DC power, but it is PoE, and that's how we're going to power it just to take a look at the interface 
And then it's also got these handy dandy mounting screws if you don't want to use the included Velcro. Now to give you an idea of the size of this device, I have a Cloud Key Gen 1. So the Cloud Key Gen 1 is about the same length, um, about the same thickness there, but the Axis device is definitely a little wider. Oh, the other thing that I forgot to show you is there is an SD, there you go, an SD card slot. So you can load up all of your favorite audio sounds and pump them out to the IP speakers. So we're gonna fire this up real quick. I'm sure that it's got an older version of the firmware on it. So we're just gonna do a quick overview. We'll really dig into this um, when we pair it with our IP speaker and we start doing all kinds of cool things with it. So I'm actually going to take a uh, ethernet cable that's in my Unify switch back there and I'm going to plug it in and when I plug it in you're going to see the LED or you may not see it you'll just have to see but there it is so that uh, the LED the status uh, has come on so right now it's amber which means uh, it is booting so it will uh, turn green when it is ready so I'm going to let this guy boot up I'm going to set it over here to the side I'm going to pause the video once I have the IP We'll be back and we will hop right into this. We'll be right back. All right, so here we are. The IP address that it grabbed from the network is 192.168.66.53. When we put this in production, we will put a static IP address on it. For now, we're just going to go through it. The very first thing, if you have dealt with access devices, is they want you to um, either set or change the root password. The default user is root, and a lot of times the uh, default password is uh, like pass. Now this should ask me to just go ahead and change the password here, which is what I'm doing. Um, oh, this is also on VIF compatible. So we'll, we'll look at all those things. All right, so, and of course, we're not long-term going to log in as root. We are just gonna do it here uh, tonight. So you can see that this sees itself as an audio device. It's in standalone mode. It doesn't have anything paired to it yet. It will be the master, you know, when we're done. So we've got a basic setup over here. We've got users. This is where we can add our uh, users here. So actually, let's do this. Let's, uh, we will add, we'll add w how. And you can be a viewer, which is basically read-only. You can be an operator, which uh, when we deploy this and use the app so people can change um, can change uh, speaker settings, volume, and things like that, we give them operator. Um, and then you can be administrators. We're going to add WHOW as an administrator so that next time when we get down to business with this, we don't have to log in as root. TCP IP, we will come back in here, and we will set a static IP date and time we'll set the time zone real quick here there's uh, Chicago there and we want to automatically adjust um, for daylight savings time now we're gonna save that but the other thing that I need to do is I need to set an NTP server so right now all of the network settings are coming via DHCP so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an NTP server in here and if you've watched any of the other videos you know I'm gonna use NTP.UIUC.edu which is the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign that's the national uh, supercomputing laboratory down there so if their time is wrong man we are in trouble I am not gonna enable FTP We'll leave RTSP enabled. I think we're gonna leave all this other stuff here under advanced TCP IP the way it is. Go ahead and save that. Okay, that is now saved. So we'll go back over here and it looks like we did get some synchronization, so that's good. Then we've got our VoIP settings over here, so they do have a uh, assistant, they have an, an assistant that will walk you through that. We will actually join this to the Grandstream phone system here, and uh, we can do some pretty good, pretty cool things. Maybe what I'll do is I'll set up an extension, and I'll just let you know that my extensions are in the 5000 series, 
and I'll set this up and whoever can call in and guess the extension that we set this to, you'll get to shout in my house, right? In my office. You'll just get to say whatever. Maybe. I don't know. That's kind of dangerous. Remember when we took phone calls on the internet and somebody called in and pranked me? So I'm going to have to really think about that. All right, so here's some more stuff. So we got, of course, the audio overview. We've got the system settings here. Now, in order for us to be able to take that input uh, for that 3.5 millimeter jack and pump it out to the SIP speakers, we've got to enable that uh, audio input there. So we will do that. We'll apply that. You know what? These settings, they actually... Let's see. All right had to uh, scroll out and make sure I was clicking on the right thing under device settings so you can actually hook a mic into this and the IP speakers already have a mic built in and you can see that we can change the audio mode to duplex or simplex we can also choose the source uh, line in. So it can be line or it can be microphone so the device does know if it's a microphone because then you can supply power to the microphone. This device is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I, I can't say enough about it. So those of you who have phone systems um, and you already have a PA system, if you can accept an RCA um, input, so this is going to go out from this device. So we could take this and you don't have to have uh, one of those SNOM paging devices. You can use this access device and you can go into whatever uh, your unit already is. It's it's beautiful. This does come preloaded um, with some devices. I don't think... Yeah, this one... Does this one have the dog barking? No, it's got birds chirping. It's got a ringtone and some things like that. So we... <laughs> We were demoing the horn speaker, and in the building we were in, you could hear people talking all over the building, and we played the dog barking, and the horn speaker was so loud, the building went silent. It was, ab it was absolutely hilarious. And then we played the chicken dance. Um, you could do uh, configuring, configuring of your audio clip down here. Here's more of this voice over IP, the voice over IP settings. You can do all kinds of triggering using DTMF tones, so we're going to get into that. Um, we're going to get into all of these settings, but know that they are here. So you can, you know, you can tie this in to your VMS. Um, here's all of the accounts. So like right now, if I were to actually um, pick up my uh, a SIP phone and dial 192.168.66.53, um, it should... Uh, ring this, but I don't have this this going out to anything right now. So I need to get I need to get an analog speaker that I can plug this into, just something cheap. So if you've got a favorite analog speaker, like a modern analog speaker that you use, put that down in the comments and I'll check those out. Here are the DTMF settings, and we're going to get into that because you can do some really cool zoning things. Um, so that that's coming you can also load third-party applications on here like audio intelligence and all, all kinds of things here are the detectors so right now we do not have the mic in so if we had the mic in the level will be much higher and we can take a sample and the uh, configuration example that we were given uh, with this is you have a mic plugged into this. So let's say you've got a server room and you're having some HVAC problems like the HVAC, the air conditioner keeps dying. So you can take an ambient sound reading of the room and then you can tell this device with the microphone plugged in that if the ambient uh, sound, uh, sound temperature, the ambient sound level of the room goes below uh, a certain level, that this thing can call a phone and play a sound or it can play a sound on a speaker. You can do all kinds of cool stuff like that. Applications, we will get into some of the third-party applications, some of the stuff that Axis and their partners are doing. It is, is literally... It's, it's transformative. It will change the way that you do business, the way that you think about phones. It will change the way you think about audio. It will change the way you think about cameras. So I, I just I cannot say enough about them. And, and that uh, video of the Axis Experience Center is coming. So here you can see the Axis audio player is on. It is stopped. 
So this is where we can build our own cues with MP3s and other sound files on an SD card. We can also hook this to certain types of streaming. So if you're going to do it through the audio player, it, it, the, uh, you have to find a, something that's streaming that is in that format. Um, the other way to do it is you start up Spotify, you plug into that three and a half millimeter jack and you just go. So <clears throat> we're not going to mess with the audio player yet. We will get into that. Here you have um, events, so you can start doing actions. So it's like a, it's like a, it's like when we program anything else. Starts at the top, works its, works its way down. You know, uh, we can set up different recipients. We can set up different schedules. We can do recurrences. All these things are built in. Languages right here. We can download different lang uh, language packs to this device. Right now, English is the only one. Loaded, we could add Spanish to this, French, any other language that Axis has the uh, language file for, we can load into this. Under System Options, one other thing that we're going to do here is we are going to make it so this interface uses HTTPS. You know how I feel. We should be encrypting all the things. All right, so under Security, we've got our users. So the next time we get into this, this is where we're going to use WHOW. We've got IP address filter, so we can turn this filter on and we can deny or allow IPs to connect to this. So if you've got this on the network and you've got only certain devices, let's say you've got a tablet that's running the app and you don't want people who are on that same wireless network or that same wired network to be able to get to this, you only want that tablet, you put a static IP address on your tablet, you build out your filter, and then you don't have to worry about anybody that's on that network that segment getting to this device. The Axis Audio app, if you go out right now to the Play Store or the App Store and you search for Axis Audio, A-X-I-S Audio, um, if you have one of these devices or a speaker on the same network you're connected to, it will show in the device by default. So anybody who had that. So when we're deploying these things, we got to talk about security. Not only IP security, but then user security. Um, here, we are going to say that we want HTTPS connectivity um, only. And you can see that this has the default um, self-signed certificate. So we could generate a certificate, and in some environments, you will have to have a real CA certificate on these. But we'll go ahead and save that. Now, it says all the connections will be interrupted. It takes about 20 seconds, and then I'm going to have to refresh this and use HTTPS. So I don't know, I don't think I can just click the reload button because I switched it from HTTP and HTTPS to HTTPS only. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm super duper excited by this product. Um, I'm sure that my, my wife um, is tired of hearing me talk about how great Access Communications is. And she probably wishes I'd just shut up about it. But I can't. I can't. I've got so many use cases for Access with their cameras. And they've got Access. They've got Access has Access Control. Um, the camera. So I, I've got a camera that I ordered on the way. And we're going to tie all these things together. We can do emergency alarming. We can do, I mean weather alerting just so so many things all right so we're doing https here you can see i logged back in as w how we can do 802.1x if we need to and then here are your certificates so we can do a csr we could go out we could uh, get that ca cert and get it installed on here and maybe we'll go ahead i'll probably go ahead and do that just as an exercise so you know how to do that here again is our date and time here is our basic TCP IP settings. You've, you've seen this already. The advanced settings are SOX settings, QoS. So we can set those DSCP values. We've got SNMP we can turn on. UPNP, and it is enabled by default, so we'll take a look at that. And Bonjour is enabled by default. Here we have storage. So you can connect two different types of storage to this. We can stick an SD card in, which we will do when we start playing around with these. And we can also mount a network share, which is going to be really, really awesome. So that will be coming there under ports and devices. So here is our IO port, 
which is that uh, port that's on the side that they gave us the uh, connector for. So we can do, you know, say if it's an input and output, we can name it and then we can talk about the normal state. So right now you can see it's, it's open and then we can uh, do different things. So let's say that I hooked a relay into this and <clears throat> let's say that uh, it was an area that I didn't have a camera, but let's say I had a cabinet um, and I had something in the cabinet and this is just a, this may be a poor example, but let's say that I had a relay um, set up that, that uh, a mechanical relay and when I break that um, uh, relay by opening the cabinet um, that it would then play an audio sound like, hey, what are you doing in the cabinet? You know, and then we could uh, actually say only do that between 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. You know, because between 8 and 5, Willie's going to get in the cabinet. LED, we can control the status of the LED. We can take a look at the input port status. You can see they are both inactive at the moment. Uh, here on the maintenance tab, this is where we can restart, restore. Um, it resets all parameters except IP. So if you got a static IP on this, you can blow everything out but the IP address by clicking that restore button. Or we can hit default, which just wipes the whole thing clean. This is where we're going to upgrade the firmware. And in the next video, we are going to get into that. You do have to have an access account. So you have to go over to axis.com and sign up for an account to be able to get firmware for the device. But the firmware is provided to you at free, uh, provided to you at no charge. So it's free. Um, then if you have a bunch of these, you, uh, you can flash the LED. I don't know if you can see this here. But uh, the LED is flashing between red and green. And if uh, it's going to go, it's going to go for 10 seconds. Clicking that didn't stop it. Uh, so if you've got a load of these or uh, a load of these or a uh, multiple of these devices and you've got them all mounted and maybe they're not labeled and you need to go in there, you can just flash the LED to ad identify the device. Under support, um, this is uh, where you can get a, a troubleshooting guide here. There's a server report that you download to attach when you are um, turning in a support ticket. And then this kind of talks to you a little bit about the uh, Axis tech support. Now, I will tell you that sometimes people look at the price of an Axis device and they freak out. So like the camera that I ordered was like $339 or something like that with tax and then shipped to me. But what do I get for $339? I get a three-year out-the-door warranty, period. No questions asked, three-year warranty. Then I get firmware updates for the life of the device. And if you go and you look at the Axis devices, they've got devices that are 10 years old. They're still pumping out firmware for them. And then the other thing is like actual like tech support where you can... Um, you know, you don't have to pay necessarily for the tech support, depending on what it is, they might be able to help you, but you can get to an engineer, right? So uh, the support system works a little bit different. It's my understanding, and if anybody knows any different, that you can actually pick up the phone and call an access engineer once you start getting into the solutions. You may have to go through your gold or silver partner or your integrator, but you actually get to access uh, tech support. All right, so here's our system overview. This uh, tells us all the things. It's got some logs on there, services, the ports they're running on, kind of a, a system quick overview. We've got logs and reports. So this is where we can download all of that information for tech support. Under advanced, um, we can do our own scripting here. Under plain config, this changes the, uh, the view for the config. Then under the about, you're going to see the access uh, the the model number you're going to see the firmware number you're going to see the mac address and then you're going to see copyright and then if you know, there's third party software licenses we can click you know view licenses and that will um that will it'll come to life for us so i am so excited to start bringing you access content um i really do like live live breathe and eat this stuff and i'm i'm you know, I'm always on the security side. So security is a huge part um, of, of what I do, a huge part of what I do. Um, but the life safety portion and tying in and everything like that, um, bringing all that together, man, that is becoming a super, super huge passion of mine. But 
Um, I will put a link to this uh, Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't change your price. It does kick a couple bucks to the channel. So if you buy one of these, I do appreciate that. You can use this for paging, like I said, to go out to an old system. And it'll work with any system that supports SIP. So um, I will put that down there. If you need IT consulting for the Axis products, for voice over IP networking, whether it's wired or wireless or security, please go to willyhow.com, fill out that contact form, and somebody will get with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That is our promise to you. If you would like to speak to us on Discord, the link is down below. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are down below. If you would like to support the channel by becoming a patron on Patreon, and thank you to those folks. That link is down below. And as always, the Amazon affiliate links are down below. They don't change your price. They do kick a few bucks over to the channel to keep things rolling in. So I do once again appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, I'll see you in the next video, which should be on World Backup Day. So hang in there, and I think you're going to love what we've got for you.